In this video, we want to see how to calculate moving annual total. Now, back in MSPT DA video number 10, Years of Mars and Jan Wilhelm posted in the comments and said, hey, instead of doing a Power Query map calculation with multiple queries, probably better to do it all in one query so you get a faster calculating query. Now, here's all the steps we're going to have to do in Power Query. It's just flat out hard to do in Power Query. If you want an easy way, look at our last video, 1724, where we saw how to do it in the worksheet. Or look at the next video where we see how to do it with DAX. But in this video, we're going to see how to create all these steps, including a custom M code function. These steps right here constitute step one, where we're trying to get a cross join of all the products and all the end of the months. Then we create a key with the month and product to get monthly sales totals. Then we join the cross join of month and product with the monthly sales. And we're doing this rather than grouping by because some months have zero. And for those zero months, we still want our map. Now, as we complete these steps, Sometimes a step will deliver a number or a list or a table. And we'll be working back and forth between the different steps. So this is going to be a great advanced M code video using mostly the user interface. Now I've imported the Excel table into the Power Query window. The name of the query is F Sales. We first want to reference this, so I'll right click Reference. It didn't duplicate the code. It's just looking back and pulling the data. I'm going to rename this F2, Matt, Product, Month, and Enter. Now, the first thing we want is a unique list of products. So I'm going to come up to the F of X. We'll transform that previous step, which is the full table. We want to extract the column. So we use our field access operator with the field name, Enter. That gives us a list. Now we're allowed to use list dot distinct, open parentheses, close parentheses, and Enter. Now I'm going to rename every single step. So I'm going to click on the step F2, product list. Now I like to name all my steps without spaces because it makes the code cleaner. And I usually give descriptive names about what's going on in each step. Sometimes people prefer to have short names and they'll go up to Advanced Editor and add notes. But that's not the way I'm going to do it. Now I need to refer to Source again and get the min and max date. So I click F of x. And notice I'm referring back to a previous step. And the column I want as a list is date. Enter. So I have my list. Lots of list functions. Now we'll use list.min. Open parentheses. Now I'm going to rename each step, but I won't include that in the video. Now we can copy this, Control-C, Enter, click F of x, highlight, and Control-V. Now we want the max date. Now we need the number of days between the max and min. So we'll say, hey, that previous step, which is delivering a date, minus the min date variable, I see it, so I hit Tab. Now if I hit Enter, this gives me a duration. And I don't want that. I want it as a number. So we'll do number dot from. And that'll convert whatever it is, a text number, a date number, whatever, to an actual number. It's not quite what we want, because we need to include the first day. So I add 1. Now with that information, we can create a list of dates list.dates, open parentheses. It wants the start, which is our min variable, min date, comma. The count, there's our official numbers, comma. And the step, well, I'd like to put one day, but we have to give it a duration. And the duration function starts with a pound. And we have to give it one day, comma, zero hours, comma, zero minutes. 0 seconds. We'll close parentheses and Enter. And there's our list of dates. 
Now we need this as a table, so I'll just use, since the List Tool tab is open, I'll use To Table. I'll accept the default, click OK. Now that we have all the dates, I really just want the month. So selecting the column, we'll transform this column using Date, Month, End of Month. I'm going to rename this. And we're going to call it end of month. We don't have to do that, but I like it because we're going to have end of month and, the, and use those as keys later. And now we can remove duplicates. Right click the field name, and there it is, remove duplicates. Now I renamed both of these with a 1 at the end because I'm going to use the same steps later when I build the key on the other table. Now our next step is to bring in from product list that list into each row and then expand. Now anytime we iterate over a table with a list or a table, it's probably best to buffer this step, which means later queries won't have to re-pull it each time. It'll become a static list that it can just use in each row. So I'm going to add a step here. Come up to f of x, insert a step, and this is a list dot buffer. Close parentheses and Enter. And I'll name this list.buffer. Now we come back down here. We want to add an extra column to do a cross join. Add column, custom column. This will be product. And the name of that query right there, list.buffer. Now when I click OK, it brings the exact same list into each row. Now we can expand to new rows. That means it will repeat the end of the month with the three products. And then here, end of the month with three products. And there we did a cross join between those two columns. Now we want to convert data type to text. And then we want to sort the date column ascending. And then within that, we want to sort product ascending. Now I put an 01 at the end because that's the end. In fact, all of these steps were just to get this cross join. Now we need to calculate the monthly sale. So I'm going to come up to f of x, referring back to source, selecting date, transform the column, and we need end of month key here, end of month. And I'm going to call it, double click, the same thing as that previous column. And I renamed those steps the same as the previous ones, but with a 2. Now I can group end of month holding control product. Right click, group by. Those are the two columns. We'll call this monthly sales. The operation is sum on the sales column. Click OK. Now we need to join monthly sales with our cross join. And watch this. I'm going to F2 copy because I need that query name. And then selecting the last step, I click F of x. And the function is table dot nested join, which will do a left outer by default. Open parentheses, the first table, control V, comma, then the key. There's two fields, so we use list syntax, curly brackets, in double quotes, and month, comma, and product, comma, and then there's the second table, and we have the same two fields. So in the fourth argument, there's the key, comma, and then the new name, this will end up being monthly sales. Because we're pulling monthly sales into the cross join table where we have products and months, including the months that have 0. So we'll end up with some nulls because there are some monthly sales that don't exist. But that's what we want. Close parentheses and Enter. Now we get a table, and we only want monthly sales. So we can Expand, uncheck everything. We only want monthly sales. Click OK. Now I don't want that name, so I come up to the formula bar, and I'll alter what the table expand table column function calls that column. Now we have some null values right there. And we want that null value because in the final table, we need to calculate mat in a month when a particular product had no sales. So right click, down to Replace. We'll find all lowercase null, and we'll replace it with 0. Click OK. Now we have a complete cross join of month product and our monthly sales. And for every single row in our mat column, 
we need to go backwards from whatever the month and product is and grab all the product monthly sales from above and add them to get the moving annual total. Now, when we do this, it's not like an Excel formula that can look at a reference inside this table in this extra column. We're actually going to have to bring the whole table and look at it in each row. Now, when we do that, that means each row is going to go back and pull the query. And we don't want to have to pull the query each time. So for that step, we want to buffer the table. So I'll click f of x, table.buffer. That way, it'll grab it one time and use it over and over. Enter. And I'll name it table.buffer. Now we're going to add an extra column to do this. So we go to Add Column, Custom Column. We'll call this column Matt. And I want to put some dummy data here, just one. That means we'll put a one in every row, just so we can see what the custom column dialog box uses for its function. When I click OK, there's the table.addColumn function. It's acting on the previous step. There's the name of the column. And the word each, that's shorthand for a custom function, which allows us to iterate over each row and get the value from the different columns. The problem is, right here, we're going to use a second iterating function called table.selectRows. And it's also going to use the word each. Now, that causes a problem, because we're going to have the table out here and then the same table inside that function. So the way we get around that is we're not going to use the shorthand for table.addColumn. We're going to use a defined variable. You define a variable for a custom function inside of parentheses, and we'll call it x. In other videos, I've called it things like outside table or ot. And then after, we use the go to operator equal greater than. That means everything that comes after is the custom function that can use that variable. Now I'm going to come back up to the dialog box by clicking the gear icon. And we'll replace that one with table dot Select rows, open parentheses, table.buffer. That's that'll be the inside table, comma. And this is where we create our function. And here we'll use the keyword each. That allows us to get at each row in that table. After each, we have three logical tests. The first is, and I'll use available columns over here because it's easier. I don't have to type it out. The each allows us to pull the product from the inside table. And I want to say, when you're equal to, and I have to preface the outside product column with the x. And guess what? I can put it in by just double clicking there. So anytime we use an x, it gets the outside column. If we don't, then each will pull it from this table here. We use the and logical test operator, the word and in lowercase. Then we need to look at the date column twice. So I'll double click this for the inside table. And this will be the lower limit. So I want to say, hey, when you are greater than, and we do not have the 12 months back date we need for each row in the outside table, but no problem, we can use dates.add. And there it is, months. Now look at that. Autocomplete is so bad inside of Power Query. Look at that, it did it up here too. Anyway, open parentheses x to get the outside end of month. I'm going to get tricky here and double click. And comma, I need to push that back 12 months. So minus 12, close parentheses. So that's checking the date on the inside table against the lower limit. And we need to check the date. Are you less than or equal to the upper limit x to get to the outside end of month column? And there's our three conditions, close parentheses. Now, when I click OK, we'll have trouble. Uh, Table.addColumns is trying to be polite. It put each back in there. But I'm going to delete it and Enter. And now we have a filtered table. So that column right there is what we need to add for getting 12 months back for the Bellin product. To get at the column, we have to use our field access operator. So up in the formula bar. Field access operator, monthly sales, and Enter. Now we get a list. And to add those after the go to operator, list.sum. 
And that should be, when I hit Enter, our mat. And these are the same exact numbers we got in the last video when we use Excel worksheet function. And the same numbers we'll get in the next video when we use DAX formulas. Now I want to rename this. And now we can close and load, close and load to on the existing sheet. I'm going to put it F5, click OK. So that was a lot of fun with M code and Power Query. Next video, we'll use the same worksheet and do it here. We'll use DAX. All right, if you like that video, click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to check out some other videos, check these out.